Help support AMTV by becoming a patron, an AMTV staff member, and following us over on Twitter. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here. And welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be talking about Tiny Pop, which I wasn't expecting to do again, but quite a lot of you wanted me to touch on this. The channel has recently been taken off the terrestrial airwaves. It is gone, it's not there anymore, it's been thanos out of existence. Well, sort of. See, like I mentioned when this announced towards the end of January, Tiny Pop, like a lot of channels, is moving away from terrestrial broadcasting, but it's not going away entirely. In fact, the branding still can be found, more in a digital sense now. It's part of the Pop Player, that service that's been running for the Pop brand for a few years, and it's still available to stream digitally. But in terms of a terrestrial channel, finding it like we used to find them in the good old days, that's not the case anymore. And, you know, a lot of people were thinking, oh, do you know, maybe, maybe Tiny Pop will be the one to break out from the mold. You know how we had CITV last year, that went off the terrestrial airwaves. And, you know, CITV, with its 40 years worth of history, they didn't really do anything to celebrate that or honor that. They just showed an advert for ITVX Kids, which, of course, is what it's now being amalgamated into. And then that was it. It was off the air. It was a bit lackluster. It was a bit unwarranted. And some people thought Tiny Pop was going to break that mold. I wasn't too hopeful myself. So, you know, the grand result, what do you think they did? Do you think they went out in style? Do you think they celebrated 20 years of Tiny Pop history? Of course they didn't. No, they just, I believe like one of the shows ended, you got the Tiny Pop ident, and then another one, and another one, and another one. It seems like from what I've seen, a rolling loop of Idents presided over the channel for a while. Certain services, such as Virgin Media, for example, it got pulled off of there. It redirects you to CBBS instead, particularly for the preschool content aspect. So yeah, Tiny Pop pretty much went off without a whimper. Now, you know, don't get me wrong. If CITV isn't going to celebrate their 40 years of history, I was highly doubtful that Tiny Pop was going to do so with only half of that lifespan, genuinely. And I think even this poses questions to when other big channels are going to be moving to digital. The key example here being CBBC, which is touted to be moved to online only probably next year in 2025. We haven't had a direct confirmation date, but that seems to be the most likely one. Now, like CITV, they've got over 40 years of history and arguably a lot of CBBC programs over the decades have been groundbreakers in their field for children's television. They could easily run even just a montage or something to celebrate that, to honor that, but it just seems like TV companies aren't in the business of doing that. You know, people point to back in the 80s and 90s, like where, say, the ITV regions, if they lost their license, like Southern TV, for example, I think that lost it in 1981, and they had this whole big thing about it going, and when a bunch of the uh, franchises lost their license in 1992, they made a big deal about it as well. But I think one of the difference there is, you know, there was no digital option for them necessarily. There was no streaming site to go to, nothing like that. If your channel was coming off the air, by and large, that was it. So I guess there it made there was more impetus to do a sort of celebratory program to end things on. Whereas these days, even channels that are moving online, they don't seem to feel that need to mark the end of their terrestrial footprint, which is absolutely there, right? I'm not saying they have to do that. But when you get these behemoths, particularly in children's television, you know, CBBC and CITV, and they're not doing anything. And again, Tiny Pop may not be as much of an established name as those are from the main broadcasters but the pop brand has been with us for over 20 years now and it has been doing phenomenally well here in the UK it's something that I wouldn't say I necessarily grew up on but I did dabble with from time to time as a kid particularly if I was on holiday across Europe for whatever reason a lot of the TVs there had skyboxes and the main channel of access it wasn't Nickelodeon it wasn't Cartoon Network or anything like that it was pop and its various sub channels too so with it fully moving online you know you can still go on the tiny pop website but Apart from telling you a bit about what the channel offers in terms of programming, it mainly just redirects you to the Pop Player, which is where it is. And in fact, why don't we have a look at the Pop Player website, just see how it presents itself. Okie dokie, here we are then on the Pop Player. And as you can see, like a lot of the streaming sites, this looks and runs very much like a Netflix, like a Disney Plus, you know, panels of shows that you can scroll along, different subgenres and stuff like that. In terms of its app, it says you can watch it on all devices, so you can watch it on your phone, you can watch it on the telly, you can watch it on your laptop, on your iPad, there really is no limit, it seems to, where you can access the pop player, and 
in terms of that, that very much seems to be the way it's going. You know, people consume their content on these streaming devices. So having it accessible on a wide range of devices, you know, devices that even children are savvy with, you know, let's not pretend that they aren't savvy with iPads and stuff like that. It makes it very accessible. And I think for the brand, it makes sense. It's a very logical way for it to go. Like when you look at what it's compatible with pretty much most of the main uh, TVs like Android, Amazon, Apple, Freeview even, and UView computer, you know, Chrome, Mac, Windows, and mobile and tablet, the, you know, Androids and iPhone and iPads. So all the major ones you'd expect are catered for here, which is the right way to go. In terms of uh, Tiny Pop's footprint on here, you can see it in some of the uh, sub brandings. I don't think there's one exclusively for Tiny Pop, but there's Tiny Pop Euler. Do you get it? Because it's popular. There's also Tiny Pop Show of the Week, for example. Uh, there's one there, Tiny Pop in with dinosaurs, etc. It's there. The branding is there. It's very much there. But it's very much there as part of the website. The branding still survives, even if they're not categorizing it as much as you'd think. You know, they're just. They're just doing it in a way which makes families easier to find it. And, you know, it's got a search bar. It's got all these sorts of things. It's not exactly going to be too hard to find. Because when you click on shows, it is literally just a full list from A to Z of the shows they carry. It's not necessarily split into what is suitable for Pop, what is suitable for Pop Max, and what is suitable for Tiny Pop. By the looks of it, it is literally every single show you can think of just listed here from A to Z. And all of this, you know, the other pop brand channels, how does that affect them? Well, in the recent Freeview changes, for example, that we saw at the end of March, they're moving up on the channel board. You know, the regular pop channel goes from 206 to 205. Apparently, it's only going to be in areas served by a local TV service that is on channel 7 and 8. That is the same for Pop Max, which is bumping up from 208 to 206 on there. The pop player itself is also available. That bumps up from 212 to 208. So the main, the other two brands seem to be catered for. I know a lot of people uh, express surprise that out of all of these to go you know that pop max wasn't the one to disappear because out of those ones you know that was the the youngest one as it were it was formerly known as kicks which i must admit is a channel i never heard or used back in the day it was launched in 2008 and apparently its target demographic originally was more for like the boys market between like 6 and 15 which is a very odd very wide demographic you know from as young as 6 up to 15 you think they'd break it down more than that but that's indeed what they went for so it replaced pop plus one in 2008 there and it continued on into the 2010s alongside you know pop and uh, tiny pop indeed so it got its rebrand in 2017 so just shy of 10 years in rebranding to pop max although the programming is virtually what it was under the kicks name as well and like i said all of its shows are also available on the pop player app i believe or the vast majority of them are sort of creating that brand symmetry within everything so yes a lot of people were quite surprised that out of you know of the three pop channels the one to take off terrestrial television that it wasn't pop max that it was tiny pop instead i guess in terms of accessing content aimed more at preschool audiences parents might prefer it to use their you know the pop player on their tvs or their ipads or everything like that Pop Max, I don't, I honestly don't think that's going to have much life left as a terrestrial channel. I think that may very well may be next in the few coming years. And in regards to the main pop brand itself, you know, that thing's been going since, what, around 2003. It's a very established name in the front of children's TV. I, I hope that will go on as a terrestrial channel for as long as it possibly can. But the way things are going and the seeming success that the Pop Player app has had since it launched, you know, amalgamating all of this together, it wouldn't surprise me that, say, before the 2020s are out, that we end up having no terrestrial pop channels on the air and they're only either accessible via digital means, like via digital televisions or... or via the pop player app because this is the way it's going we're seeing this a lot in in a lot of videos we've talked about where channels are disappearing some of them granted are disappearing full stop altogether some of them are just losing their terrestrial presence and more are on the way they're moving more to this online only world and like I've said, I've got no issues with things moving digital. I think if that's the way it's going, that's the way it's going. But for some things to have a terrestrial footprint still, I'd like to think, as I say, the main pop channel, if anything, will hang on for as long as it can. But will it live into the 2030s? I don't necessarily think it will.
So it is a shame. Obviously, it's always a shame to lose, I think, a TV channel in terms of its terrestrial footprint, especially when it was catering such a service as Tiny Pop was. I've been completely transparent in past videos saying that, you know, I never grew up on Tiny Pop myself. I was well out of that demographic. I think even by the time the channel launched itself back in 2004, I was out of that demographic. But I recognize, and from a lot of your comments, you know, younger viewers who have commented, it seems like it had such a special place for a lot of you. And it had these programs that you wouldn't have normally had access to via, say, the BBC or ITV or even Channel 4 or Channel 5. So a lot of you got introduced to these shows, a lot of these shows that you love and adore through Tiny Pop. So when it's a channel like this that clearly has a footprint, that clearly has an audience and people are going to miss it, I do think that's a shame. But again, am I surprised that no celebratory thing was made to close off his existence? Absolutely not. I'd, if they weren't going to do it for CITV, they sure as hell ain't going to do it for Tiny Pop. But it seems like the channel gave people 20 years of great programming and great memories as well. We can only look back on what has been. But I want to know your thoughts on all, all this. You know, obviously it's a shame, but do you think Tiny Pop could have pulled out more of, more of the stops to celebrate its existence? Also, do you think the other pop-branded channels are going to disappear in the near future? Do you think they're going to vanish just from terrestrial, or do you think they're going to disappear entirely? Let me know all of these thoughts in the comments down below. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel as well. Well, we'd love to have you aboard here with us. In the meantime, I've been Adam Martin from AMTV. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. The way to find Tiny Pop is about to change. It's going to be all mine. <laughs> no, we're going totally digital. What? Whoa. Don't worry, it's simple. You can search for us on your smart TVs like Samsung and LG. We're screened. And we're on the Pop Player on any device. The most fantastic thing of all is... It's free, safe, and you can watch on the go. I like that. So find the new home of Tiny Pop. Right now on your smart TV and the Pop Player on any device. You're watching Tiny Pop. Stay right here on Tiny Pop for all the best shows. Thank you to our patrons for helping to support the show, and a special thank you to Macra, Ethan Carberry Holt, Bruce Danton, Globe of Reviews, Derek Chambers, Sean Nock, Dord Khan, Liam Demain, Trev Hughes, AJ Mac 200017, Deck KP20, Simon Harrison, Evan Hart38, and Jen, our AMTV staff members.